So today's my five, my fifth year anniversary of sorts. Um, it was August 5th, 2015 that I got the call that none of us ever expect to get or want to receive. Um, August 5th, 2015, a week before that, I had gone into the hospital to have a biopsy done because my PSA levels were elevated. And sometimes an elevated PSA could mean or could be an indication of cancer. And so my doctor told me, you know, she was concerned and wanted me to go ahead and have a, a biopsy. Um, and so I went and I did it, um, but wasn't concerned, didn't think that it was gonna come back as cancer. I thought it was, you know, when you have an elevated PSA, it could mean that just that your prostate is enlarged, which sometimes happen for men who are over 40. So I went, I took the test, and then on August 5th, 2015, uh, the surgeon, the doctor who performed my surgery, he called me and you know how sometimes when you can, you hear a person's voice, they may just say hello and you can tell that the information that they're about to share is not going to be good news. And so immediately when I heard his voice and he, he asked if it was if, if this was Harold, and I said yes. I knew that it was not going to be the news that I wanted to hear, and so he said to me, he never said you have cancer. What he did say was, I need you to come in immediately so that we can talk about your options. And so I'm like, okay. So I knew what that meant. I'm like, talk about my options. And I remember getting off the phone and just really going numb. You know, you ever get some news that you can't even process it and then it just seems surreal? Well, that's how I felt. And I remember I was, um, started thinking about, how do I tell my son this? You know, I'm the only parent he has and he was getting ready to go into his senior year of high school. You know, we have been looking forward to, to that for a long time. And so now we're dealing with, you know, this cancer diagnosis. And I remember thinking, how do I tell him that? Because I never feared that I was gonna die. That just never crossed my mind. But I know that so often when people hear cancer, they think of death. And my concern was that that was going to trigger something for my son, that he would, you know, start to be concerned about me and just be overwhelmed with fear and not be able to enjoy, you know, his last year of high school. And so I kept trying just to think of what words to say and how to say it. And I just remember thinking that if he doesn't see fear in me, that that will give him some assurance that everything is gonna be okay. And so I, I remember telling him, you know, about the diagnosis. I remember him just like looking at me real intense and not knowing what to say, just, and then I remember him saying, are you gonna be okay? And I'm like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be okay. We got this, I'm gonna be okay. And, um, but after the diagnosis, I remember him just always looking at me and observing me just to make sure, you know, because he was dependent on, sometimes those that are around us that they are depending on our faith so that their faith can be strengthened, you know? And um, I had to go in probably a couple of weeks later to have the, the surgery where they were gonna see if 
they were gonna put about 125 um, radioactive seeds into my prostate. And at that point, they weren't sure if they were gonna have to do external radiation or not. Um, and so I went on, you know, with my life as normal. I went, had the surgery, they put the seeds into the prostate, you know, and of course, anytime you have a procedure, you know, you don't know if it's gonna work or not. But it was during that time that I decided to make some changes in my life because um, I wanted to eliminate whatever atmosphere I had created in my body that created an atmosphere where cancer happened. I wanted to eliminate that. And one of the things that I started looking at and, and during my research was um, the association with the foods that we eat. Uh, and it's not so much the foods themselves, it's the chemicals and hormones that, you know, a lot of the, the meats, chickens, beef, all of that stuff, they are pumped with a lot of uh, hormones and chemicals that are harmful to our bodies. And also, I remember, you know, before my diagnosis, I used to love eating cheese. That I love cheese. I could eat cheese all day. Well, during my research, um, I discovered there was a strong correlation between cancer and dairy. You know, I also loved ice cream. I could eat that all day. Um, and then sugar, you know, all of those things, those three things that most of us consume that's a part of the typical American diet. Um, there is research that shows association with various forms of cancer and all of those things I was eating it. And I thought I was eating pretty healthy, but I really wasn't. And so as I started getting more information, I wanted to make sure that I didn't have to go through this again. And I wanted to to make sure I was doing my part to not create an environment where cancer could thrive in my body. And uh, so I started changing my diet. It didn't happen overnight, it was gradual. But also I realized that for most of my life, I had normalized stress. You know, I would show up everywhere with a smile up on my face but behind that mask, I was terrorized by my thoughts of fears and insecurity and always just worrying about nothing, just worrying, just worrying. And stress, you know, we hear that tagline all the time that stress is a killer, but it really is because it weakens your immune system. And when your immune system is weakened, you become susceptible to all kind of ailments and diseases. And I remember making a conscious decision, you know, during the time when I was going through treatment to, to make some changes in my life, um, to just be intentional about what I was putting in my body and what I was allowing to affect my, my emotions and, and, and my stress levels uh, because I didn't want to go through this again, you know. I didn't want to. I didn't want to put my son through this again. And so, um, it's five years later. I'm still here. I'm healthier than I've ever been. I feel better than I've ever felt before. And it's because I started making, you know, incremental changes in my life. Just trying different things. I think so often we get stuck in doing things because we've always done them. But if we want some different results, we gotta try some different things. And, you know, I wanna be here to see my grandchildren. And so I just wanted to hop on here just to encourage someone who might be going through an illness, who might be going through a diagnosis that you can get through whatever you're going through. You can make some changes that will help to improve your health. 
it's not about perfection. It's about progression. Just making incremental changes and, and seeing how things work for you. Um, cancer is not a death sentence. Any kind of illness you're dealing with is not a death sentence. But pain is information. You know, those diagnoses are information. It's information that we need to do something different, that we need to make some changes, and that we need to be more intentional about what we allow to affect us and impact us. And so I just want to get on and encourage you on my anniversary, my five year anniversary since I was diagnosed with cancer. So happy to still be cancer free after five years. And just want to encourage you to, to treat yourself well, you know, treat your body well, you know, make sure that you're not allowing stress to overwhelm you and weaken your body and your immune system because you deserve to be healthy. You deserve good health. And you know, if you don't do it for you, do it for your family. Do it for the folks that love you, that depend on you, that look up to you. So just want to encourage you on this one.